Reservoir systems across the country have their ups and downs, but that doesn't mean you can't continue to catch walleye. Up next, John joins fellow guide Brent Chemnitz on Mighty Lake Oahe, where high water is causing walleye to show up in unusual places. Watch as they flesh out a surefire system you can use on impoundments across the Midwest. There's one. Boy, did he nail it. Just when I was coming up that ledge there, that guy just popped it. You know what? I was worried that what I was going to be in was a tree there. Yeah. <laughs> so I was watching that rod real close, and this fish came up and nailed it. There he is up on the surface. Looks like a decent one to start, huh, Brad? Yeah. We're out on the Missouri River today, and this is one of my favorite places to fish. It, it always has been. You know, we used to come out here and fish a lot of tournaments back in the 2000s. And this is one of those fisheries that is just so neat because it's 100% self-sustaining. When you come out here, you're fishing fish that are consistently just reproducing on their own. There is no such thing as stocking out here. That one got tangled up in that line, but it looks like we're gonna be okay with that. But that right there is exactly what is so neat about the Missouri River. It's just full of walleyes like this one. This is my friend Brent Chemnitz. Brent and his wife own the Mo Rest Motel here in town. And, and I'll tell you what, this has always been, like I said, one of my favorite places to come. But you spend a lot of time out here on this place, don't yeah, I you? I do, yep. I get, I get a lot of days of guiding out here. Yeah. We run a charter service out of our motel there. And it's, yeah, busy time of the year for us. So yeah. We're going to have a lot of fun out here today. We're going to show you exactly how to catch them, not only on this reservoir here at Mobridge, but we're also going to show you how to catch them techniques that'll work pretty much anywhere up and down any of these reservoirs whether you're in South Dakota or wherever you may be. Settle down there pal. That's a great way to start right there. Throw that guy in the live well to start our day. Here's a fish. Got him? Yep. Here's one on okay. this other one, John. Okay. You gotta like that. Come through a spot. They all pop. This one might be a little bit better too, Brent. Okay, I'll swing, swing this better. one. And... Okay. I don't know, that one you're pulling in might not be, might not be totally worthless. No, he's probably 15, 16 inch or John. And you're going to get a lot of those out here. One of, the, one of the things about the Missouri River is the action you'll have throughout the day is just phenomenal. I mean, you'll just catch tons of that fish right there. They're great yeah, eaters. Good eater. And they're fun to catch all day long. This one actually might be a decent fish here too, bud. I'm going to keep him for... I'll go right over the top here. Okay. Yeah, throw him in there for dinner. Oh yeah, this is a decent fish here. Okay. Thank you. We're up in a, one of the tributaries, and one of the neat things about the Missouri River system is there are tributaries all over this thing. You can, you can go up into these things, you can find them one after another, and what happens is these fish, in years like this, which is high water, yeah, it's a great one right there, nice isn't fish. it? Real nice fish. Look at that fish right there. Yeah. Real nice fish. That, Look at that. That's, that's awesome. What we're after. That's, that's awesome well, right that's there. That's what we're after. But these fish, what's happened is this is a high water year on the Missouri River system. And I knew it right when we drove into town. I'm not seeing any trees sticking out of the water. But that sucks all these fish up into here, doesn't it? It does. I mean, we've had a lot of rain in, in June and May. And when we get a lot of rain that causes current in these uh, tributaries and yep. all our bait fish come up here and the walleyes are right behind them following them. Yeah, well, let's get this one unhooked. We'll throw him in the well. What a great walleye. Oh, nice fish. We're gonna throw that fish in the live well because he, he actually bloodied me a little bit, but 
man, there's fish like this all over this system. Doesn't matter where you're fishing, north to south. This thing's just loaded with fish like that one right there. On Oahe here back in 2011, we had a major flood in the system and, and it entrained all of our, uh, our schmelt, which was our main forage base on the system at the time. Now what these fish have done is they've totally changed uh, what they're feeding on. And this is, this is the profile that we're, we're looking for. Most of our fish are after, like I said earlier, they're after crappies, they're after white bass, baby sheephead. Wally Shad is just the absolute perfect crankbait for that, uh, for that size and profile. Ooh, there we go. Oh yeah. That one actually seems like a decent fish too. Oh yeah. Better so, fish, John? Yeah, this is a good fish. You know, it's always, always a little tricky to tell. We're running, we're running a lot of line out there today. We're running between 160 and 180 feet of line to put these lures down. You can see that fish, I got them on the surface. Yep. A lot of times what that means is it's a real good fish. But one of the things I do, when I get a fish on the surface like this, try to keep them up there. Go up with the rod tip, just keep them coming slow and steady. Because here's what can happen. You let him get back down and he can shake his head a couple times. And that's when all of a sudden you'll lose a lure. Not lose the lure, lose the fish. He'll spit the lure. He'll get rid of that lure. So once you get him up like this, just try to keep him up there and keep him coming. He looks as good as anything we yeah. got in the live well, doesn't he? Very nice fish, yeah. Boy, it's a neat pattern when you get on it back in these these tributaries. Because you look around today, you don't see another bullet. No, There's a lot of people fishing people, up here. People just don't understand right. the pattern, per se. You, and you usually tell when it's a good one when they got their mouth open like that. And the Pretty thing is, is these, these fish are back here for one reason. They're back here to eat. Yep, look at that nice one. Nice fish. Yep. What a great way to wrap our day up. That's a dynamite walleye. This is one of the neatest fisheries in the country. I'll tell you what, if you get a chance to get out here and enjoy some of this fishing on the Missouri River, it is so simple to come out here and catch fish. And we actually got a tagged fish here too. This is really yep. neat. I'm gonna show this to you. But you can get out here and you can just get after fish like we have today so consistently. And boy, these fish, they're just tuned up. I mean, look at that walleye right there. He is just a ball to catch. And look at that, he got a little tag in there. So we'll take a look at that later, but we're gonna, we're gonna call it a day with that guy right there. Holy smokes, he's, he's in a hurry to go somewhere. He doesn't realize he's going in the live well and going home for dinner tonight. Get a chance to get out here to the Missouri River though, I'll tell you what, this is a neat fishery. Get out here and give it a shot. Pick up some cranks on your way out. I'll tell you what, you can come out here, you can do the same thing we've been doing here today, and it doesn't take long. I mean, we're almost wrapped up for the day, and it's only been a couple hours this morning. Whole ton of fun. South Dakota's not just for pheasant hunting. There's some great walleye fishing. There's fish definitely in here great too. walleye fishing here, yes.